So there's you know two pieces to that AI um, puzzle that are really important. One is eliminating non-value added work, especially in the AEC space where so much of our time is billed directly to customers. And so how can you be more efficient and um, leverage technology to do those redundant tasks, those cut and paste, copy, find, summarize, all those things that are, are time killers, um, leveraging AI to, to help with that. Then it's on the other side of that, you know, with value. Um, how are you producing a product that's different? Welcome to the Trailblazers podcast presented by BST Global, where we feature visionaries who are shaping the future of the AEC industry. My name is Eileen Kennedy. I'm director of BST Global, and I will be your host for today's podcast. Today, we have Jason Keppert, the chief technology officer at Terracon. Welcome, Jason. Thank you for having me, Eileen. Excellent. So, what I thought I'd start down, the, the path is your career. You have an impressive career from your degree at Western Michigan University. And uh, you were also in 2021 named the C, um, CIO of the year, the Orby CIO winner. So could you s share some insights on how you navigated your path and what are some of the pivotal moments that shaped your journey? From a journey perspective, um, you know, technology and its rapid change um, always requires you know, somebody to be versatile. And um, I think as individual contributors, you get really deep in your abilities. And um, that describes my early career of being an individual contributor. But then as um, I progressed from being a consultant to um, coming to Terracon in 2004, um, really that shifted to learning more about the business. And, um, and I think that's ultimately what you know, led to the 2021 CIO of the year was really more about Terracon's success and the success of my team and that transition from being that individual contributor to success through others and enabling them and, um, and really recognizing how the technology landscape had changed. Um, back in the 90s, I'm not trying to date myself too much, but a lot of the technology was foundational and it was about systems staying up and running and being available for use and um, performing some rudimentary automations and, and things like that. Then, you know, technology changed to where it could be, I'll say an internal enabler. Uh, you could really start to differentiate how work was executed, um, how employees were able to complete their job. And now we're on a new frontier of, you know, with AI and everything of how technology can not only change how you're doing things internally, but how you're presenting product or capabilities or value to clients uh, more so than ever before. And just being able to transition through that and transition your team through that is you know, what a, a technology leader would need to do to be successful. Absolutely, I mean, that's key. And, and in your role as CTO, you've been quoted as saying you're embracing technology to reduce um, redundancy and increase efficiency. So what are some of the things, one of the, whether it's Microsoft or some of the AI tools that you're leveraging in order to do this? As we embark upon this AI journey, I think there are two critical things that are foundational uh, beside, besides the technology itself. And that's understanding how work is done at your firm, how the work product is being done and how you're generating value for your clients. And then what are those client pain points and what are their needs? And, um, and so there's you know, two pieces to that AI um, puzzle that are really important. One is eliminating non-value added work, especially in the AEC space where so much of our time is billed directly to customers. And so how can you be more efficient and um, leverage technology to do those redundant tasks, those cut and paste, copy, find, summarize, all those things that are, are time killers, um, leveraging AI to, to help with that. Then it's on the other side of that, you know, with value. 
um, how are you producing a product that's different and how is how are you intertwining AI to help your client in in their work and um, producing products that are uh, innovative and insightful for the customers and so rather than having a customer go through a wizard and answering dozens and dozens of questions anticipate that build out AI to be able to predict that and give the customer ultimately what they want. It requires a, a deep understanding of your customer's journey as well, um, but that's, that's where we need to go. Absolutely, and you talk about bringing a lot of these tools in, AI tools to enhance uh, the technology with utilizing humans. Some people have said that, that this technology is going to replace humans in some way, shape or form. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, more so than ever, uh, garbage in equals garbage out. So um, having uh, what we call at Terracon the human in the loop, yes. we think will always be a part of the equation. Um, getting data into a place that is usable, fit for purpose, um, being able to understand that data journey from capture to curation to delivery. Um, computers can do a lot and AI can do a lot with that, you know, whether it's chat GPT or Copilot or, you know, name, name your AI product. Um, but you really need to be intentional about the data that you're curating and providing. Again, deep understanding of what data is important within your organization. Uh, and then on the delivery side, you know, there's legislation that is lagging, mm -hmm. right? And, and so as long as we have um, professional engineers that need to stamp work products, right? You know, the public safety is first and foremost. Um, I don't see AI creating that final work product. Um, the caution there is as we get better at creating drafts and initial versions of things and we do begin to leverage AI products and we, when we move from a creator to an editor, um, we need to make sure that we're still applying critical thinking and using the experience and knowledge that has been gained over years of doing that work so that, you know, I don't want to say hallucinations, but right. so that things like that don't appear in that final product. Um, and, and hopefully it won't end up being where there is AI generated product or design um, that results in a catastrophic failure or something like that, then that would really, you know, make everybody take a step back. I completely agree. And, you know, whether I, I know technology is moving and now you can use rag technology and get even additional information. But at the end of the day, I completely agree that it always comes down to having a human in the loop. As you, as, you, as you coined the phrase. Um, well, speaking of having uh, a human in the loop and um, garbage in, garbage out, you need prompt engineers to actually program the, 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 the device, the AI tool, whatever it may, may be, correctly. Uh, it means that you would maybe be hiring different types of talent um, within your organization, and have you seen that, or do you see that happening even further over time, where it's not as many engineers, or, or it's a different type of engineer, I should say? Um, it can certainly be a different type of engineer. Uh, I still think all the fundamental and foundational capabilities, whether it's on the technology side or the engineering side, need to be present. Um, but engineers certainly will um, be better position to be successful if they are more, you know, technology savvy. But I think that's really taken care of itself. You know, we, we are now, you know, in the age of digital natives moving into the workforce and, you know, thinking about the ages of my children, their children will be AI natives, right? right? AI will already be in place and interwoven into a lot of the systems and technologies that they will use growing up. So when they come into the workforce, they will have the aptitude to take advantage of that more so than you know previous generations have. So I think some of it will just naturally happen where they there are more you know 
technology ready uh, in the workforce. Um, certainly, IT will change in um, you know traditional programming will change as AI is able to generate a lot of the fundamental code and stitch it together. I still think you're going to need those architects, those solution engineers that are understanding the business and understanding how best to design those systems and um, you know create good user interfaces and and those those types of um, nuances uh, to to developing product. Absolutely. Well, speaking of developing product and the different technologies, is there a specific technology that you would recommend investing in or making your top priority um, within Terracon or even within the AEC space? I don't know if it's a specific technology. Um, I would say the most fundamental thing is having a data strategy and a platform that supports that. And that doesn't mean a single you know, technology. It's, a, it's an ecosystem of technologies that both help your workforce capture that data in a way that is appropriate and efficient. Uh, it curates that data in a way that you know, is um, making it fit for use being able to get the lineage and the provenance of that data and knowing where it goes and architecting that all out, that's fundamental. And I think a lot of companies, and I'll include Terracon in that, are, um, are a little behind in getting that, the data house in order uh, to be ready for taking advantage of a lot of these new technologies that are emerging. Okay, so you're starting with the data and, and then as you, Let's just say you get the data in order, um, when you get the data in order, I should say. Um, are there any technology enhancements that, that um, you're, you could, you're focusing on within Terracon that really to help prepare for this future, the future? Positioning mobile technology, you know, spatially aware technology, um, more so than ever, the information that you capture where it's captured uh, and being able to visualize that and moving that into you know more robust design technologies, whether it's a Bentley product or an Autodesk product, um, you know that is that is where things are moving. I also think that there are opportunities for that space to fragment where you'll have um, startups that can move really fast and are not, you know, beholden to the, you know, the, the breadwinning products that larger companies have. Now, many of those small companies will get acquired by those larger companies. Uh, but it's the, uh, in, within Terracon, we, we refer to it as the innovator's dilemma. Um, it's, it's pretty well known where you're, you're jeopardizing, you know, your product that is making you money to develop a new product. Uh, much like Amazon did with they sold books, then they sold an e-reader. Well, that no longer selling books. And so organizations need to figure out when they're providing some of these capabilities to do design and to do engineering, their product needs to change. Smaller companies are going to be developing really capable, really robust products that are maybe niche, niche but how do they get incorporated into those larger products without jeopardizing those revenue streams? Now let's go beyond technology and, and preparing the culture for these changes. How do you prepare employees to take on these new initiatives, to embrace them and to learn and then execute? Well, certainly technology adoption and change management is a, a continuing conversation within Terracon and, and likely within a lot of organizations. Um, people are people. And once you're familiar with how to do something and when, you're, um, when the time that you're spending on a job is billable or chargeable to your clients, uh, there's a natural aversion to change. Um, and the AEC space is known as a laggard in technology adoption because we are engineers and scientists and 
we know what we need to do and how we need to do it to deliver what we do. Um, making technology approachable is going to be a key skill set that I'll say technology leaders need to have, but they need partners in the business to be those change leaders um, so that it's not a technology change, it's a business change, it's a process change. Um, you know, we, we use the three, um, three legs of the stool, people, process, technology, and um, you need to think about all three of those things if you're truly going to differentiate yourself with emerging technologies. Um, you know, you run with the early adopters, win, you know, have champions that'll win over the majority, and then eventually, you know, the laggers will come. Um, but it's, it's the same challenge we've always had. It's just happening faster today. Exactly. When it comes down to it, change management and people is probably one of the hardest things to manage across any industry, I would imagine. <laughs> you know, as, as fast as technology is changing, the people are still there. Um, and, and, and speaking of, you're in a, a CIO group um, in Kansas City where you network with peers. And how has something like this helped you to kind of learn about whether it's new business processes, new um, changes, or even... Um, the culture and, and the people side. Yeah, so just the broad exposure to different business models, uh, different employee bases, different products, different concerns, uh, whether uh, they're banking institutions or they're healthcare institutions or retail, um, marketing, um, hearing those different um, aspects of what they're concerned about and understanding where their focus is in adopting technology typically fills in around the edges of what you're doing. Whereas if you're just in an AEC group, we generally all have the same challenges. And, and it doesn't get to an echo chamber, but sometimes you get too focused on some very specific things and you, um, you, know, you miss the forest because of the trees. And so the CIO group really gives you that broader um, perspective of uh, you know what a what a bank may need to do from from a data or AI or risk or cyber or whatever uh, versus a healthcare organiz organization that's dealing with personal information and privacy information um, to retailers who need to change rapidly um, and and you know, continually go through and innovate on the user experience more. Uh, we tend, in the AEC space, tend to have cap captive audiences that are happy with products like Microsoft Excel. Yeah. And, um, and so getting that perspective from others where they're looking at their customers and their employees and, and what their expectations are can really help round out what you're trying to deliver uh, within your firm. I would imagine how important that is. I mean, as focused as we are on the AEC space, it's, it's nice to see where technology is going because things are moving so fast and speaking of moving so fast uh, looking into the future five to ten years out um, what do you see um, AI enhancing or changing whether it's at within Terracon and even within the AEC space so I do see AI moving us along that path that we discussed earlier of efficiencies and uh, eliminating those non-value add um, type of activities. Uh, I don't see it as producing final designs. Um, I've seen some things from some industry uh, insights and uh, organizations that have said, you know, 70% of draft designs uh, will be AI generated. Um, I think it'll force uh, the AEC industry to be more consultative. Um, and we talk a lot about that at Terracon around how does this make us a better consultant? Um, because AI and emerging technologies will provide more robust and numerous options uh, from a design perspective that it used to take, you know, hundreds of hours to generate, now will take hours or minutes. But it's being that consultant for your client and, um, and taking those options and adding your expertise to those to make recommendations 
uh, to work through, um, you know, their life cycle. I, I you know, I, th- I see that as where we need to be. I, I see technology as making us be able to do a lot of those things much, much faster. Um, the caution, and, and I think this goes across industry, is um, the, that critical thinking component where uh, we need to make sure that we are diligent in retaining that um, critical thought as we're looking at designs and not just assuming that whatever was generated by the system is right. Uh, and, um, and that's something that we could lose as our junior staff gets comfortable mm-hmm. with AI or other equivalent products doing the work for them. Uh, they won't interrogate that as much. Um, we're already seeing some of that even in, uh, you know, products like Microsoft Office mm-hmm. and Adobe, where it's, or even your Gmail, where it's suggesting things to you to write, right. and um, you just accept it and go. And um, So we just need to be cautious on that because it's not making us think about how we want to position word, and words matter. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the recommendations that we're given to our clients. So, Jason, in closing, I have two questions for you. Um, one is, what is the best advice you've ever received? And the other is, if you were to go back 25 years and give advice to yourself on your career, what, what would that be? The best advice I received was learn the business. Um, as technology has evolved and grown, um, and, and we touched on this earlier, it really went from this behind the scenes, back office, the network is up, the server is running, to being interwoven into everything that the firm produces and does. And so I was given guidance to, if you want to be successful and you want to move forward in your career, and more importantly, provide value to the firm, learn the business. And, and that means how work is executed, what are employee expectations, what are pain points and friction points, and try to be relentless about eliminating those, understanding the value of the product or service you provide to the client and how that generates revenue for the firm. Those are things that you, you need to know. You need to almost be a business leader as a second hat um, as a technology leader. And, and so that was great advice that I received. And I've tr- always strived to learn more and more about the business. And I certainly don't know it as well as many of my peers um, within my organization and, and out, so can always improve. Um, if I were to go back 25 plus years, <laughs> um, I, would, um, I would tell myself to keep an op- more open mind and to not um, you know, go down a couple of rabbit holes and, and make assumptions about what I wanted my career to be and what I, because you never know where life is going to take you. And, um, and I think, uh, although I feel like I've been successful in my career, uh, there could have been um, you know, some, some things that I had done differently if I'd have been more with a, I'll say a growth mindset uh, rather than a fixed mindset around the opportunities. Um, and, um, and again, not just technology. Uh, I think sometimes in the, in the technology space, you can, you can fall in love with the tech, the tech and, um, and it needs to be a part of the picture, but not all of the picture. I think we all would say, oh, if I, if I only knew this 25 years ago, I think I said that throughout my, you know, my, my lifetime, whether it be in personal or professional. And I, um, but that, that's really great insight, Jason. And um, it sounds like you got some really good advice as well. So I really enjoyed having you on the podcast today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much you. for joining today. Appreciate it. And thank you to all of our viewers for watching the Trailblazers podcast. Until next time. Take care.